Today we have been asked to determine if a real zero exists between the given points A and B. So for our first question, we have three questions. For our first question, f of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus 9x minus 13. Point, one, point A is 1 on the x-axis, point B is 2 on the x-axis. Now, the way we're going to do this is actually a very simple and uncomplicated process which is called the Intermediate Value Theorem. And the Intermediate Value Theorem, if you read it, sounds very complicated. But basically it states that if between point A and point B the sign of a function changes, okay, the sign of a function value changes. Now you've got to remember, what is the function value? What is the function value, okay? Well, I want you to think about this for a second. If I graph this, just a piece of scratch paper I have on my desk here. If I graph a function, some function, you know, and it's going like this, okay? The function value is the height of the graph. It is the y value. So if I say to you, find f of 2, you go to 2 on the x-axis, and you read down, and you find that point, and you read over. Whatever that y value is, that is f of 2. So what I'm telling you is, if at 2 it's negative, and at 3 it is positive, what is a zero for a function? A zero or a root or a solution to a function is the x-intercept. Well, if it goes from negative to positive, or positive to negative, it has to cross the x-axis to do that. So, um, what I'm trying to tell you is this. You're given two values. If you find f of 1 and you find f of 2, and the sign changes between them, you had to have crossed the x-axis between 1 and 2. That's what the intermediate value theorem says. So how do we do this? Well, there's two ways to do it. You can use substitution. That is, you can plug the number 1 in everywhere you have x. Or you can use synthetic division and the remainder theorem. Now, I prefer to use synthetic division. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up two synthetic division problems. 1 is 2, and 1 is 1. 1, 3, negative 9, negative 13. And this is 1, 3, negative 9, negative 13. And we're going to do two synthetic division problems. Copy, multiply, and then from there it's add and multiply. So add, multiply, add, multiply, and add, and we get negative 18, okay? And then we turn around and we try this one, okay? Copy, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. And what happens? This is f of 1, and this is f of 2. Okay? It was negative, and at 2, it's still negative. So we cannot say for certainty that it has crossed the x axis. Therefore, the question is is there a zero between points A and B? And the answer is no. Okay? Uh, another question, problem number two uh, different polynomial, different points. Is there a zero between point A and point B? Yes or no? Okay, and again, the easiest way for me to do this is through synthetic division, okay? And on this side, I'm going to synthetically divide by 2. On this side, I'm going to synthetically divide by 3. So 1x to the 4th, 0x to the 3rd, negative 2x squared, 0x, and then negative 6. Remember, if this is a fourth degree polynomial, you're always going to have one more term in your synthetic division. So four degree polynomial, one, two, three, four, five terms. Okay? Same numbers here, one, zero, negative two, zero, negative six. Okay? And we're going to do our synthetic division and see what we come up with. Okay? So we copy and then multiply and add. So two, 
two, four, two, four, four, eight. And negative six plus eight is two. It's a positive number. So this is f of two. Copy, then multiply and add. Multiply, we get nine, and that gives me seven. Uh, three times seven is 21. And what you're going to find here, I think, uh, pretty pretty immediately, uh, 3 times 21, 63. And 63. And, and honestly, folks, it doesn't matter what your answer is here. What matters is you know this is a positive number. So this is positive, and this is positive. And the intermediate value theorem says you have to change signs. You have to change signs to prove that there is a zero between two points. So is there a zero between these two points? And the answer again is no. Okay, so third one. Here's our two points. Here's our polynomial. Is there a zero between A and B? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Again, synthetic division. Okay. And over here, we're going to synthetically divide by 1. Over here, we'll synthetically divide by 2 because those are our x values. The coefficient for x to the 5th is 2. The coefficient for x to the 4th is 0. For x to the 3rd is 0. For x squared is 0. For x to the 1st is negative 7. And then for our constant, which is x to the 0, is 1. 2, 0, 0, 0 negative 7 and 1. Now, uh, again, a good way to check this, this is a fifth power, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's how you know you are at least on the right track. So, uh, synthetically divide, copy the first term, multiply, you get 2, add, you get 2, 1 times 2 is 2, 0 and 2 make 2, 1 times 2 is 2, 0 and 2 make 2, right, you keep adding, Add vertically, multiply by 1. Uh, negative 7 plus 2 makes negative 5. Uh, negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. So our remainder is negative. Here, copy. 2 times 2 is 4. And then 0 and 4 make 4. 2 times 4 is 8. So 0 and 8 make 8. 2 times 8 is 16. 0 and 16, you add together to get 16. 2 times 16 is 32. And then 32 minus 7 is 25. And then 2 times 25 is 50. 50 plus 1 is 51. So this is negative. This is positive. They have changed signs. And so is there a root between A and B? And the answer is yes. A root exists between x equals 1 and x equals 2. Okay? A root does exist between x equals 1 and x equals 2. So this is an easy way to tell if you have a guess. Well, I think there's an answer between 2 and 5 or 2 and 3 or negative 1 and 1. Um, you can very easily use the intermediate value theorem to find out if that is true. So if you have any questions about this problem, please let me know.